In this lecture, we're going to discuss thermal sigmatropic shifts and why the 1-5 sigmatropic shift takes place under thermal conditions and why the 1-3 shift does not take place under thermal conditions. So let's begin by discussing what the transition state actually looks like within a thermal sigmatropic shift. Now, basically, for this H atom in the 1,3 pentadiene to move from the first carbon to the fifth carbon, this bond between the carbon and H must be broken. Now, generally speaking, what does a transition state for the breaking of a bond look like? Well, it looks something like this, where on the reactant side, we have a full sigma bond. In the transition state, we have a partially broken sigma bond, so basically the difference distance from the carbon and the H atom between the carbon and the H atom basically increases. Now once we stretch this bond enough, the bond will break and the electron, one of the electron will end up on the carbon, the other electron will end up on our H atom. And so we have an intermediate being formed. Now we know in sigmatropic shifts we have a one-step mechanism and we have no types of radical or anion or cation intermediates being formed. So we know that the sigmatropic shift cannot have a transition state that looks something like this because this will produce a diradical as shown. So what does the transition state of our thermal sigmatropic shift actually looks like? Well, basically it looks something like this. Instead of this bond only being broken, we have this bond being broken, but at the same exact time, a bond between the fifth carbon and the H atom is being made. Now, in the final, in the final product, we have a bond broken between this carbon H atom, but this bond is already made. So, in a single step, in a single concerted step, we go from this molecule to this molecule, and this is known as the 1-5 sigmatropic shift. Now, we can also discuss this in terms of the overlap between the orbitals. So basically, the 1s orbital and the p orbital of this carbon overlap to form the bond in our reactant side. Now, when we basically undergo this transition state, what happens is the overlap between the 2p orbital of this carbon and this 1s orbital of the H atom decreases, but the overlap between these two atoms, between this fifth carbon and H atom begins to increase. And so at the end when we form this product, our overlap is lost between this carbon and this H atom, but the overlap is gained between this H atom and this carbon here. So this reaction is known as uh, the 1,5 sigmatropic shift. Now the question is, why is it that the 1,5 sigmatropic shift takes place on the thermal conditions, but the 1,3 sigmatropic shift does not take place? That is, why is it this carbon only overlaps with this carbon in the transition state, but this H atom cannot overlap with the third carbon? So basically, why doesn't this reaction take place, known as the 1,3, sigmatropic shift. So in this reaction, there is an overlap between this carbon and this 1s orbital of this H atom, as well as the orbital of the third carbon and this H atom. And in a final step, we have an overlap, a bond that is formed between the third carbon and our H atom. And the bond between this carbon, this H atom is lost. So why does not this shift take place, but this shift actually takes place under thermal conditions? Well, to answer this question, we have to discuss the overlap between the highest occupied molecular orbital of the 1,3 pentadiene and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So we have to discuss the orbital interaction. Now, what exactly are the different types of pi molecular orbitals of our pentadiene molecule? Well, basically, we have five different molecular orbitals because we have five 2p orbitals, five carbons that donate, that each donate a 2p orbital. So together, we have 
five different pi uh, molecular orbitals. Now we have our phi 1, phi 2, phi 3, phi 4, and phi 5. Now as we go along the x, uh, along the y axis, the energy increases. So we are basically examining what the overlap between the orbitals is in the transition state. The question is how many electrons are found in the pi system inside our transition state. So in the transition state this H atom has one electron and this entire system here has five electrons. So initially there are two electrons in the sigma bond and four electrons in our two pi orbitals. But here, or our two pi bonds. But here we have one, two, three, four electrons that come from the pi and one electron that is donated from this stretching of this sigma bond. So that means within our transition state we have five electrons within these orbitals. So two electrons go into the lowest in energy phi one, then the next two electrons go into phi two, and the final electron goes into phi three. So we see that the highest occupied molecular orbital in our system is the phi 3 of our pentadyne. Now what exactly is the LUMO, the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital? Well the LUMO is basically the 1s orbital of the H atom. So we see that the HOMO is phi 3 pi molecular orbital of pentadyne while the LUMO is the 1s orbital of our hydrogen. Now, what exactly is taking place during our transition state? Well, we have an interaction between the HOMO, the highest occupied molecular orbital, and our LUMO. So, in our transition state, the HOMO looks something like this. The first orbital has a negative lobe on the top, a positive lobe on the bottom. So, between the first and the third, we have a bonding, anti-bonding, so they cancel out. We have this black dot. The third carbon contains the reverse of the first carbon. We have a positive green region on top, a negative blue region on the bottom. The fourth one, once again, is canceled out because we have bonding anti-bonding and the fifth one contains once again the blue the negative on top and the green the positive on the bottom. So we can imagine this carbon is number one, carbon number two, three, four, and five. So the first carbon within our transition state has this orbital, the third carbon has this orbital, and the uh, last carbon, number five, has this orbital here. Now our uh, electron, or actually our H atom, contains the 1s orbital, and it's the positive, so that means it's green. Now, before the transition state actually occurs, we have our reactant. On the reactant side, we have this 1s orbital of the H atom shown here and the sp or the 2p of our carbon and they combine to form the sp3 hybridized. Now when we begin to pull away the 1s orbital of the H atom, this sp3 hybridized breaks and we go back to our 2p. And when our 1s is between this carbon and this carbon, we have this diagram as shown. So notice that the orbital on carbon 1 and the orbital are on carbon 5 are exactly the same. So here the 1s basically bonds to our 2p from the bottom and because the green lobe is also found on the bottom on our fifth carbon, all this 1s has to do is basically move over a small distance across, so from the bottom. And this type of interaction where this 1s orbital basically attacks from the bottom to the bottom is known as a superfacial interaction and only a superfacial interaction will actually take place. So we, we see that the reason that the 1,5 sigma tropic shift takes place on the thermal conditions is because we have a superfacial interaction taking place in which this green orbital that initially interacts with the green lobe of this can simply go a small distance and then interact with the same green 
region of the lobe of this uh, orbital of our fifth carbon. However, it cannot do the same thing with the third carbon because on the third carbon, the green part of our orbital is on the top. And to do that, the 1s has to move all the way around from the top and this type of interaction is commonly known as antarafacial. And antarafacial interactions are not very likely. They basically do not occur because this 1s is simply too small. So this is too small and it's going to take it too long to move all the way around interacting with this. And because this is much easier to do bottom to bottom interaction than, the, uh, than bottom to top, this is the more more likely reaction to take place. And so under thermal conditions, because this is our HOMO and this is our LUMO, we have our superfacial interaction taking place which basically leads to the 1,5 sigmatropic shift product and not the 1,3 sigmatropic shift product. So once, uh, once again, in the case of thermal 1,5 shifts, as the 1s hydrogen orbital departs from the first carbon, it immediately begins to overlap with the fifth carbon's orbital because they're very, very close. More importantly, the overlap is from the same side, from the bottom, known as superfacial and between the same exact signs. Both are positive, both are green. Remember, a green orbital has to interact with the green lobe to form a bonding interaction. If this green orbital interacts with this blue region, that will form an anti-bonding interaction. So we see that the 1-3 shift does not occur because the 1s orbital would need to migrate all the way to the opposite side of the third carbon, which is known as the antarafacial, to actually interact with the same sign low with our green lobe. So we see that in the case of 1,3 pentadine or any pentadine, thermal sigmatropic shifts lead to the 1,5 sigmatropic product, not the 1,3 sigmatropic product. And only this superfacial interaction will actually take place. The entire facial interaction does not take place. 